So let's take a little bit of a look at some of the thoughtfulness at play. Okay. Um, and what, so the first uh, clip that we're going to start with is from Back to the Future 3. Um, it is when Doc and Marty reunite um, in the Wild West. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to play that back. Well, let, me, let me and do a little setup first. Great, please. Right. Um, so um, with Back to the Future 3, it was the Western. Um, and um, I'd always wanted to shoot one, so it was a great, you know, kind of fun thing. But um, what Bob Zemeckis and I did was we, th we thought, okay, what are the iconic images that we have seen in Western films since, you know, the silent days, really? Um, and what, what's the language that has evolved, or the dialect that has evolved for an audience? Um, that tells them, you know, visually what the story's about or the characters and so forth. So we decided to pick and choose um, images, image styles and stuff that would uh, reflect with uh, the, the Western genre. So, um, you know, there were certain attributes, very low camera angles, um, the heroic uh, images, and so forth. Um, and um, then on top of that was uh, the fact that Bob and I en really enjoy designing shots that work in one. Um, because I, my feeling is when the camera moves and the, the characters uh, move forward, the actors move forward into a, their own close-up and then turn and it's an over-shoulder and so forth, that... Um, those things are as if the audience is there watching, as opposed to cut, 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 you know. And they, they say that, um, you know, wh every time there's a cut, your brain takes a nanosecond to say, where am I, have I been here before, this is new, where am I, you know. So to the extent that you can avoid that, you keep the audience involved with the characters in the story. So um, I, uh, I, I very much enjoyed working with Bob on various ones, and, and our great fun was how do we make this shot as one. So we're going to look at um, two, uh, two bits, I'm hoping. Um, there's uh, one that will, I will point out sort of these iconic Western camera positions. Um, and then another which is, takes place in the barn um, where Doc and Marty are going through this exposition for, for the audience, telling us things. How do you make it interesting? How do you involve the audience? Um, and, um, you know, both of the guys, um, Chris Lloyd and, and uh, Michael, were really good at this sort of technical acting. I've worked with others uh, where the actors say, well, I wouldn't go stand over there. Well, it's your close-up. Yeah, but I wouldn't go stand over there. You know, well, these guys, you know, you could choreograph this dance for the camera, and they would find a way to execute it and make it look like it was supposed to be. So um, this first clip is made up of two, um, two scenes. <laughs> so Michael is... Um, low angles, um, you know, on, um, on, um, Biff, dramatic, uh, moments, um, and then a very low angle with an awful lot of foreground. What's this all about? Oh, look at that. We have a, uh, a guy enter move up to reveal this amazing gun. Well, shoot the fleas off the doors, Bert, now a low angle door. shot and framed against the sky. Dirty, grubby clothes, um, of course, because the bad guys always had dirty, grubby you clothes. Money, black man. How do you figure? My horse threw framed with the gun on one Even side and the other. So, uh, you know, these were... Response. Well, images that, that um, job, I you know, that have Whoa, been used for a long time, but specifically, especially in um, in westerns. Perfectly good bottle of fine Kentucky red eye. So the way I figure it, blacksmith, 
You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. That's the eight. Look, if your horse threw a shoe, bring him back and I'll restore him. And don't shot that horse. Well, that's your problem, Cannon. Composition giving that's you. equal value to the gun From and on, to uh, Doc. You better be looking behind you when you walk. Because one day you're going to get a bullet in your back. As they, as they ride off, we pan to reveal Doc. Trying to be efficient. Doc. Marty. I gave you explicit instructions not to come here, but to go directly back to 1985. I know, Doc. I had to come. But it's good to see you, Marty. After a little banter. <clears throat> Now we're going to cut inside Marty, the barn. Have to do something about those clothes. Uh, the barn was a dark area, um, and the excuse was, where's the light coming from? Outfit. So I asked them to remove you the did. boards um, periodically from the, the uh, roof, about every pattern, third board or so. So now there are these flashes of light that come through, That's this and it gives us oh, a I sense that there's... You know, and who's this reality. I don't know anyone named Clara. So now this is the first of three know, shots. I thought maybe she As was Michael moves forward, Marty, the camera moves back to compose. Now we'll go with Doc over to this Picoxin machine. Now, now Doc is there, but now he's going to back up to, to the brightest area of the frame so we can see the mayor up here. Cut to the second shot. Cut to the first shot. It's, um, it's amazing to think that that's only three shots and how in all three of those shots, they're playing like long one takes. Yeah. And which means that you have, what, 10 different shots within each of those shots based on the positioning. Exactly. I think that's the, that's the most fun of it um, is to n not set up a wide shot and then not say, well, and then I'll go into close-ups or over shoulders or medium two shot. But how do you choreograph it so the audience gets that variety of shots? You get to be closer when the importance is there, the emphasis. Um, you're wider when the audience is supposed to see something, you know. You're directing their attention in each case with composition, the camera movement, and uh, and so forth. So that's that becomes a lot of the fun of those kinds of things. And that gives, I imagine, Chris Lloyd and Michael J. Fox room to perform as well, because now they're performing in longer stints, so then they get Yeah, e exactly. You know, it's not like uh, I just need your close-up for when you say, oh, no, what? You know? Um, so the actor gets to, to go through a flow, and, and uh, I find there are some actors who, um, you know, as I said, don't, don't like being told, you know, where they have to walk and when. But uh, both Michael and Chris were, were great at finding the excuses because they knew the reason we were trying to get them to, you know, to move around in a certain way. And your collaboration with Robert Zemeckis on these war, how, how did that process work? I mean, one would imagine He's, you know, visualizing the script in in a way that a director does initially, you know. But then, bringing on um, his go-to DP, then is, you know, what is the at what point, um, or how much uh, collaboration is there, or how much um, creative leeway did you feel like you had in that in that scene? Well, Bob is very good because um, we we the first film we did was *Romancing the Stone*, and um, you know we. We worked very well on that together. Um, he, I think he gained a respect for my involvement and interest in telling the story properly, but achieving his um, goals for a scene. Um, so um, in, in each case, um, you know, he, he was, uh, began trusting my input or my vision or whatever. And uh, sometimes he would rehearse the scene, Doc and Marty, you, move over there, say this here. And a lot of times when the director's doing that, I will go stand somewhere else. And then I'll go stand over here and look at, to, to look for you know visual opportunities and, and how to move them around. And Bob will rehearse the scene and say, okay, that's it, great. 
Um, then the stand-ins would come in, and Bob would turn to me and say, so, now what do I want here? <laughs> and um, that was the cue to say, well, you know, I saw an interesting angle here, so if Michael would move to here, then it's a two-shot, but then, and so forth, and so forth. So, so um, you know, that's, that to me is one of the ideal ways to work, is, is that kind of, you know, collaboration, respect for each other's vision, and um, how to accomplish it. And by, obviously, by the third part of the Back to the Future trilogy, that trust has been there for such a long time that it's sort of built in. And, uh, and were you both kind of approaching the shooting in that long take one approach? I mean, was that something that you were challenge e challenging each other to do, or was that something that you were just trying to make sure? No, um, you know, I think uh, starting with, with uh, number one, um, you know, he and I both enjoyed the, the, the prospect of trying to do stuff in one. Um, and um, so w we would look for that kind of opportunity. And there are scenes in one that are, reflect that, you know, when Michael shows up at Doc's house and they're discussing about how are they going to get him back and so forth. Um, there are moments there where Michael moves forward and makes emphasis and moves back and and I think that uh, Bob saw that <clears throat> as um, you know a, a contribution to the storytelling, but also efficiency. You know, I mean, you can cut cut out five setups um, by you know combining them, um, and especially if um, you know you can get the actors to um, you know understand and and um, you know follow through.